I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at some issues with the data in the database. I made or planned for a couple of errors that I would fix as I did the video series, but I also simply made a couple of mistakes, and we're going to fix a few of those errors in this video. So we're going to use the SQL update command and a where clause to modify existing data. And we could do this in SQL Developer. We'll use SQL Workshop and the component called SQL Commands to make the changes. We will add a constraint to the employees table for a unary relationship. A unary relationship is when a table is related to itself. So you have both the foreign key and the primary key in that single table. And we will remove a column from a table. I think it was in the previous video that I talked about the mistake I made in the zip code table, and we'll fix that. We'll re-import the data dictionary using SQL Developer and see the impact of the changes we've made to the database. So keep in mind that we are changing things at the database level. So when you change things at the database level, any application that uses that database We'll see the impact of that. So even though I'm going to go into Apex and work in the animal shelter workspace, the changes I'm making are going to impact the database itself. So we have a production application and a development application, and both of those are going to see the changes that I made. So let's log into Apex as the developer. And not really related to our topics, but I just thought I would remind you that you can switch to dark mode if you want to see a different look in the apex. I'll switch back off of dark mode. So first, let's go into Application Builder and open the development application. And I want to run that. And for animals, I want to 
add a couple of animals. So I'm going to come over here to create and fill in some fields. I'll pause the video. So I'm adding a dog or a canine, category canine, black, mixed yes, adult size, I could say medium, and name, we'll call it Astro. It's male, it's available, house trained unknown, spayed, neutered, yes. I just made up a chip number and an estimated date of birth. I'll go find a picture to import and I'll create that record. I haven't selected dominant breed. We'll come back to that at a later point. I'm now going to create another record. This time it will be a feline and the color will be tan mix, yes. Adult size, medium, name, Tabitha, Female, available, house trained, yes, spayed, neutered, yes. I'll make up a chip number and an estimated date of birth. Then I will choose a file or a picture and pick a cat. Oh, I said tan, so uh, I'll pick the tabby and come up here and change that to orange and create that record. I needed to create these so we can see the issue that we have when we look at the database. So let's go back to Application Builder and into SQL Workshop. I'll open that up in a separate tab. And if I go to Object Browser, I can look at the animal data. And if I look at that data, we see actually category is showing dog, dog, dog. I'm gonna switch over to SQL commands. I'm going to bring up a notepad file with several SQL commands. The first thing I want to do is see how many categories of animals I currently have. So it's select distinct category from animals. And I'll paste that in. If I don't use distinct, then I'll get a listing of all the categories for each record. So let's run this, and I'll only see each category once. Dog, canine, feline. Come back to my SQL commands. Now I want to know how many in total records do I have in the animals table. So select count, asterisk from animals. I'll run that, and I have 53. Let's look at how many felines we have in the animals table. Run that. And by the way, this is case sensitive and it has to be in single quotes. I'll run that and I have one. We just added that. I will now switch this from feline. I could copy it in, but I'll just edit canine and run that. We have one. So out of 53 total, we have one canine, one feline. So that should mean that 51 say dog. And that's right, 51. I wanted to illustrate that so that we can see if our command for the update is effective. So I'm pasting in the command, update animals set category equal to, and I want to be consistent here, in single quotes, capital C, A-N-I-N-E, where category currently has single quote, capital D-O-G, close quote. You almost always want a where clause when you're using an update command. In previous videos, I've had a couple of instances where I did an across-the-board change and I didn't use a WHERE clause, but be very, very careful. You can really corrupt your data with a careless SQL command. So let's run this. Oh, I've got a, hang on, I've got a, I don't have the right ASCII character here. So let me try that. I've replaced the, or retyped the single quote. 
So 51 rows updated. If I switch over to Object Browser now and go to Animals and go to Data, I'm seeing K9. If I scroll down and go to the end, then I see I have a feline also. And notice even though I typed it in with a capital O, it's stored in lower case. We did that several videos back where we adjust the input that's typed in so that it's consistently in lower case in the primary color field. So I'm in SQL Developer and this is the imported data dictionary. Let me zoom in a little bit and move over and look at the main areas of interest here. What we have is within the employees table we have a unary relationship, a unary relationship. Supervisor ID relates back to employee ID. So this is a foreign key field in the very same table that links to the primary key field. We'll add that constraint in just a moment. Also, I have zip underscore ID, which I talked about in a previous video that we need to remove from that table altogether. So I'm going to switch back to Object Browser. And what I want to do is create a foreign key constraint between supervisor ID and employee ID in the employees table. So I'm going to go to constraints and I want to create a constraint. And I'll call this supervisor ID employee constraint. It's not a check constraint, it's a foreign key constraint. So the foreign key column is supervisor ID. It references employees, the very same table, and it relates to the employee ID. So I make those selections and then I click Next. And then I finish. However, we have an error here. We have an error saying that there is a, already a value in supervisor ID that does not match an imp ID in the table. So we have a conflict here. And that is because I made a mistake when I wrote the SQL for the supervisor ID list of values. So right now, I can't make that constraint. I need to correct the data. So I'm going to come over here to Persons. And I know we just added Felipe Parra in the previous video. So I'm going to so I'm going to create a query. I'll go ahead and select all the columns. And I want Felipe. So I'll go on that and run the query. And we see him here. His purse ID is 90150. So I'm going to copy that, come over to employees, do a query. And the purse ID is what I just copied. And I will run that query. The problem we have is I have an invalid imp ID. Notice the imp ID start in the 5 series, not the 9 series. Right now, just so I can make the constraint, I'm going to remove the supervisor ID so that I, so that I don't have that conflict. And I will save that. I'll come back to the object browser, constraints create, make that a foreign key constraint. Supervisor ID is the foreign key related to the same table employees for imp ID. This is what we couldn't do before. And I'll finish and it took it that time. So I now have that foreign key constraint. The correction back in the application is if I go to Shared Components, List of Values, and go to my Supervisor List, and look at the code, my mistake is here. 
I should not have the return value. Let me add a, let me move some of this to another line. This should not be purse dot purse ID. It should be employee. It should be employees dot imp underscore ID. Check the coding with the validate. It says it's at least SQL wise, it's valid, and apply that change. So from now on, when I make a selection from the list of values, the correct value gets stored. So the other thing I want to do is come back to Object Browser and select Zip, and I want to get rid of Zip ID. I'm not using that. You can look at the previous video as to an explanation of how I made this mistake. So what I want to do is drop a column. Be very careful about doing this because any application using this table that you've already created forms and reports on, you might have an impact on those forms and reports. But we're not using this field right now. So I'm going to select zip underscore ID and click next and finish. And if I look at the data, I see I still have my zip value, city, state, and state name. So the last thing I want to do is I want to come back and go to SQL Developer again. And I will re-import the data dictionary or the data model. So I can close this, go to File, Data Modeler, Import, Data Dictionary. And I'm going to not take the lookup table. So if it has lookup in the name, I don't include it, just to keep the size of the diagram down. And I will click Next and click Finish. And because I had previously imported this during this session, even though I didn't walk through it in the video, what I need to do is I'm going to merge those. And let me zoom out just a tad. So notice we have a new relationship here, and we have a foreign key designation to the left of supervisor underscore ID. This table is related to itself in a one to many relationship. And when I look at zip, I don't see the zip underscore ID field anymore. So if I wanted to preserve this for documentation purposes, I could print diagram to PDF and keep this diagram for future reference. I'll see you in the next video.